This is Saurabh, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The BG Show with Aditya. Trudeau experts have postulated that the 90s were an era of nostalgia, that incompetent TV shows like Friends and equally incompetent movies like DDLJ. I have no idea what that movie is and why there is so much nostalgia about this totally incompetent movie. Exploiting such TV shows, these very pseudo experts postulate and hypothesize that the 90s were a simpler time. Why? Because there was limited technology. Technology was not at its peak like it is today. Individuals from various professions were responsible. They were simple. They had no ambition. Well, I disagree with such hypotheses. These pseudo-experts further hypothesize that we are emotionally invested in the entertainment from the 90s because back then, with limited access to every album, TV show, film ever, the ones you did own meant absolutely everything to us. Doesn't make sense, does it? Limited access to things cannot be an excuse to talk about nostalgia and limited access is just another excuse because the ambition of an individual living in the 90s is no different from the ambition of an individual living in the 2000s, the 2010s, the 2020s and so on and so forth. Were people responsible in the 90s? Well, they were as ambitious and as greedy as individuals are today. Limited access excuse doesn't work. It never worked in the 80s and the 70s. It won't work 30 years from now. The postulated is that because during that 10-year period from 89 to 2000, looking at the example of movies, just because there was limited technology, the actors and their contemporaries focus on acting and not be affected by special effects seen in movies today which is seen as diluting the idea of what is acting. For me, no era is simple and no era is nostalgic. Just because things were supposed to be simple during a certain period, it doesn't mean that they were. Sense of social media that is pseudo media doesn't mean that these same celebrities from whom we want a detox are great role models compared to the pseudo celebrities of the contemporary times where they spent so much time on pseudo media that after a while it becomes difficult to assess their authenticity. What baffles me is that why are we banking on TV shows and movies and their limited access to say that these very TV shows and movies define an era? Well, let me tell you, TV shows and movies were always meant to entertain. They were never meant to give a truthful glimpse into an era. The worst example in this case being the TV show Friends. There is nothing authentic and nostalgic about the TV show Friends just because the TV show was scripted in a way where there was less internet and everybody was meeting in pubs and bars and coffee houses to interact. Well, if you go into the depth of such TV shows, the fact that we presume that such TV shows define the idea of Friends is absolute hogwash. The pseudo expert postulates that one reason for the boom in 90s nostalgia is that millennials fully indulge it online in a way that previous generations who didn't have the internet when they were in their 20s and 30s never could. The very pseudo expert goes on to postulate that maybe people are nostalgic for an easier, simpler time pre pseudo media. 
that could be a part of it too. I have never understood what the term simpler time means. Connecting this with the idea of pseudo media that pseudo media has made things more complicated. Well, that is not true. More times were simple. The individuals living in the 90s and before that and in the 2000s and the period after that were as ambitious, as greedy as individuals are today. Individuals don't change just because there is limited access to we create our own hell. So the postulation that the 90s were a period of heaven and the current time is a period of bad things and that is a creation of our own mind. We create the good and the bad things, good things and bad things don't create for themselves. Take the example of children. Video games exist today. Children spend time playing video games and not playing outside. Similarly, 30 years ago, video games existed and the youth or the generation of those times also played video games. They spent time on television. In that context, students and children were always spoiled by their parents. For example, this technology called computer, I have been using it since the age of five. Now you can guess since when I have been using it, but I have been using this for the past three decades. So for me, computer was never a new piece of technology or a marvel. Terms like baby boomers, millennials, generation X, Y, Z, we may even go back to generation A, B, C, D have always baffled me. Why do we use such terms? I have never understood. And why are we so fanatic and frantic about these terms has baffled me for decades. Running for simpler times is an excuse because if some form of pseudo media has always existed, pseudo media sites like Facebook, Google, Amazon were not the first ones. There were so many such pseudo media sites before, but they didn't last because they didn't impose themselves on individuals and say that this is the final form of communication for individuals as the current pseudo media sites do. Do I need to give examples of such pseudo media sites? No era, no generation was simple. It's all a state of mind. Not allow ourselves to judge an era by the TV shows during that era, especially TV shows like Friends because they are not the way people behave. Remember, it's a TV show. It's Fictional, the performers in that TV show are supposed to lie, give a larger than life idea of what is happening. It's exaggerated and that is what TV shows and movies are supposed to do. The Indian team for the Australian tour has been selected and there are a few controversial and questionable selection by the incompetent group of selectors. But apart from one or two questionable selections, the other members select themselves because they are the usual suspects who have been playing over the past two to three years. And as always, the Indian Domestic World Cup has influenced the selectors decision as far as selection of a few players are concerned. So it's not surprising not to see Rishabh Pant in the 50 and 20 over team because he hasn't performed well for his domestic team, the Delhi Indians, as far as making runs and of course the fitness part is concerned. Had he made a couple of 50s, had he scored 90 of 40 balls in one match, he would have been immediately drafted. But since he didn't do that, he was replaced by Sanju Samson, who played 
well in the first couple of matches and then of course Han's keeping skills have always been under a cloud especially by some former pseudo wicket keepers so who are the usual suspects in the team as always Kohli and the designated wicket keeper Rahul Iyer Manish Pandey Hardik Pandya Ravindra Jadeja Washington Sundar Chehel Bumrah Shami Saini and Deepak Chahar have been playing for the past 2 to 3 years and are the usual suspects of the team who are the surprise picks Varun Chakravarti and Mayank Agarwal along with Sanju Samson are the new inclusions in the team because their performances in the current 20 over domestic world cup have influenced the selectors and as always shikhar dhawan's inclusion baffles me but i don't see the logic of having a different 20 over and one day team so australia has selected one white ball team that is which includes both the 20 overs and the 50 overs the indian selectors have decided to have slight differences now let's spot the differences Washington Sundar only 20 over team Shubman Gill only one day team Shardul Thakur only one day team Varun Chakravarti only 20 over team fact that they are traveling together so what was the need to have such discrepancies meaning why not have Washington Sundar and Varun Chakravarti in the 50 over team too do we think that these individuals cannot bowl when overs in a game do the current selectors know about how to play the sport when their own skills were not even in the highest order they were in the lowest order there is no backup for rahul if he is injured there is no fast bowling all rounder but for some fun times let's look at the 11 who will be playing in the first one day match which begins four weeks from today rahul and mayank agarwal as my openers kohli at 3 shreyas iyer at number 4 nish pande at number 5 semi all rounder hardik pandya at number 6 jadeja at number 7 kuldeep or chehel at number 8 well if these two are at number 8 then the pseudo experts will say that the batting lineup is not deep enough and if you want to include both then it means that they might open with dhawan and slot and rahul at number 5 that may serve their logic but this is my team Adul Thakur or Mohammad Shami at number 9 I would go for Shadul Thakur because he is a better batter than Mohammad Shami and then of course by logic and the usual suspects Bumrah and Navdeep Saini at number 10 and number 11 but I still four weeks to go for this particular competition so let's wait and watch because injuries will play a major role and do the selectors have cups to the backups plan a is to the plan b is to the plan c is what if somebody gets injured in the remaining matches of the 20 over domestic world cup do they have the substitutes ready Tonight's song is something that you all must have heard while traveling in your cars, listening to the radio. That's the way. Aha, aha, I like it. Aha, aha, that's the way. Aha, aha, I like it. Aha, aha, that's the way. Aha, aha, I like it. Aha, aha, that's the way. Aha, aha, I like it. Aha, aha, when you take me by your hand. And tell me I am your loving man when you give me all your love and do it babe the very best you can. That's the way. Aha, aha, I like it. Aha, aha, that's the way. Aha, aha, I like it. Aha, aha, 
that's the way aha aha i like it aha aha that's the way aha aha i like it aha aha when i get to be in your arms when you all all alone when you whisper sweet in my ear when you turn turn me on that's the way aha aha i like it aha aha that's the way aha aha i like it aha aha that's the way aha aha i like it aha aha keep o babe aha that's the way aha aha that's the way aha aha that's the way aha aha i like it aha aha that's the way aha aha i like it aha aha that's the way aha aha i like it aha aha that's the way aha aha i like it aha aha reading session 1 agatha christie labors of hercules chapter 1 perhaps hercules poirot said patient and persistent you could find out the girl side dairy as her days round was it had now been made additionally so by this new burden laid upon her she said sadly well i'll see what i can do poirot thanked her and removed himself once more to the hall not daring to face the malevolent glare of the occupants of the lounge he was staring up at the base covered letter rack when a rustle and a strong smell of devonshire violets proclaimed the arrival of the manageress mrs hart was full of graciousness she exclaimed so sorry i was not in my office you were requiring rooms Hercule Poirot murmured, "Not precisely. I was wondering if a friend of mine had been staying here lately, a Captain Curtis." Curtis exclaimed, "Mrs. Hart, Captain Curtis Poirot did not help her. She shook her head vexedly. He said, 'You have not then had a Captain Curtis staying here?'" Well, not lately, certainly, and yet you know the name is certainly familiar to me. Can you describe your friend at all? That said, Hercule Poirot would be difficult. He went on. I suppose it sometimes happens that letters arrive for people when, in actual fact, no one of that name is staying here. That does happen, of course. What do you do with such letters? Well, we keep them for a time. You see, it probably means that the person in question will arrive shortly. Of course, if letters or parcels are a long time here unclaimed, they are returned to the post office. most of my listeners would have seen the movie rock on which was released 13 years ago well you had no option but to watch it because of the lack of viable and more intellectual options well in this particular movie which is usually nothing but a musical and a mishmash of many songs there is a scene where the protagonist who is drunk in that scene tries to woo another semi protagonist and it proves that indian movies not only plagiarize specific scenes from other movies or the entire movie they also make a mash up of other songs so let's see how this particular song goes first i was afraid i was petrified kept thinking I could never live without you by my side but I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong I grew strong and I learned how to get along and so you are back from outer space I just woke in to find you here with that sad look upon your face I should have changed that stupid lock I should have have you made you leave your key if I would have known for this one second you'd be back to bother me go now go walk out that door 
Just turn around now because you are not welcome anymore. Weren't you the one who tried to hurt me with goodbye? Did you think I'd crumble? Did you think I'd lay down and die? Oh, not, not I. I will survive. Oh, as long as I know how to love, I know I'm still alive. I've got all my life to live and I've got all my love to give. And I'll survive, I'll survive. Hey, hey. Of all the strength I had not to fall apart, destroying hard to mend the pieces of my broken heart. And I spent so many nights just feeling so sorry for myself. I used to cry, but now I hold my head up high. I'll survive as long as I know how to love. I know I'm still alive. All my life to live, and I've got all my love to give. And I'll survive. I will survive. I will survive. P.G. Woodhouse, Stiff Upper Lip, Jeeves, Chapter 16. I wonder if you have ever noticed a rather peculiar thing. How differently the same news item can affect two different people. I mean you tell something to Jones and Brown, let us say, and while Jones sits plunged in gloom and looking thick to a splinter, Brown gives three rousing cheers and goes into a buck and wing dance. And the same thing is true of Smith and Robinson. Often struck me as curious that as it was so now, listening to the recent heated exchanges between Madeleine Basset and Gussie hadn't left me with what you might call optimistic, but the heart bowed down with weight of woe to weakest hope will cling, as the fellow said, and I tried to tell myself that their mutual love, though admittedly having taken it on the chin at the moment, might eventually get cracking again, causing all to be forgotten and forgiven. I mean to say, remorse has frequently been known to sit in after a dust-up between a couple of troth flighters and all that sorry I was cross and can you ever forgive me stuff and love and being down in the cellar for a time with no takers perks up and carries on again as good as new. So, blessings on the falling out that all the more endears is the way I heard Jeeves put it once. But at Stiffy's words, this hope collapsed as if it had been struck on the back of the head with a china basin containing beans and I sank forward in my chair, the face buried in the hands. It is always my policy to look on the bright side, but in order to do this, you have to have a bright side to look on and under existing conditions, there wasn't one. This as Madeline Basse would have said was the end. I had come to this house as a resonor to bring the young folks together, but however much of a resonor you are, you can't bring young folks together if one of them elopes with somebody else. You are not merely hampered, but shackled. So now, as I say, I sang forward in my chair the F buried in the H. To pop Basse, on the other hand, this bit of front page news had plainly come as rare and refreshing fruit. My face being buried as stated, I couldn't see if he went into a buck and wing dance, but I should think that it highly probable that he did a step or two. For when he spoke, you could tell from the timbre of his voice that he was feeling about as pepped up as a man can feel without bursting. One could understand his fuzziness, of course, of all the prospective sons-in-law in existence, Gussie, with the possible exception of Bertram Wooster, was the one he would have chosen last. He had viewed him with concern from the start, and if he had been Living back in the days when fathers called the shots in the matter of their daughters' marriages would have forbidden the bands without a second thought.
This is Saurabh, and you're listening to my favorite talk show, The Weekly Show with Aditya.